So, <laughs> I always do a sound check. I didn't do it today and the sound wasn't on. That's typical. So, no sound check. Thank you so much for letting me know. Hopefully, you guys can hear me now. So, this is the first ever q and I've ever done without reference to Bitcoin. You guys are looking at other things. And the questions from the Patreon community, by the way, cheers to the Patreon community, little Patreon mug, is um, all about pair trading, profit taking, layering out, dollar cost averaging on steroids, um, Rivian versus Tesla. We're going to look at Uniswap versus Aave and a whole bunch more. My favorite DEXs and sexes, centralized exchanges, that is. And let's just jump in. And a thank you as well to the Patreon community for all the great questions. And of course, anything I say here is edutainment. A lot of people give me grief about that. I could blow it up and read it out loud, but that would be wasting your time and I'm not going to do that because there's a chance about speed and information. And uh, all the questions come from the Patreon community, as you well know at this stage. And again, I love gauging week to week how the sentiment changes and how people look at different things. And after the big run we've had, there's a lot of questions around how do we layer out? Where are support levels? And we'll tackle all that. But the very first question is from Crypt. Tathon. I have a feeling we could see another DeFi summer in 2023. Could you do a crypto compendium breakdown for Aave and Uniswap? Well, I will do more than that. Uh, this is interesting. So before we jump in, one of the predictions that I made for 2022 was that DEX volume would be bigger than SEX volume, like decentralized trading volume would be bigger than centralized. And that is happening now, a little bit late. Sometimes kind of we can be a little bit early to the game, but better to be in a position a little bit early than too late, of course. First of all, quick reminder for those who may not have been around in DeFi summer 2020, this refers to a period of explosive growth in the decentralized finance sector. And in the summer of 2020 is when everything exploded. It, it was kind of remarkable because you could have bought Ethereum for like 90 bucks in March 2020 when COVID hit. And then within a few months, Everything was gangbusters. It just blew up, literally. And this happened in the summer of 2020. And during this time, the value in DeFi protocols increased dramatically. And the sector received a significant amount of attention from investors, the public, the media. And this led to the launch of hundreds of new DeFi protocols, partnerships, and billions into the space. And it resulted in increased adoption and what they call growth in the DeFi sector and DeFi summer question is, could it happen in 2023? I think it's already happening gradually. We'll dig into some information, but answer your question first. Then I'm going to go a lot deeper, like I like to go. These are the IA crypto compendium rankings for the two tokens you mentioned, Aave and Uniswap. So Aave has one of the best scores out of the top 300 cryptos of anybody. Uh, that is about 8.8. .8. And you can see Uniswap have a score of 5.8. Not as good, but remember, sometimes it doesn't necessarily mean a token is bad, but a weak score like under five can mean, yeah, it's not worth it. Too much centralization, too much inflation, too much, a whole bunch of other factors go into the score. But anyway, we'll, we'll go a little bit further. Let's look at metrics of Aave and Uniswap and compare them. I know you didn't answer this specifically, but I wanted to check in on them too as to where maybe there's an opportunity. So here you can look at a couple of things from Aave. We've got a fully diluted market cap. We did a whole video on that the other day. And it's about 1.2, 1.36 billion. Uh, TVL, 4.7 billion. Very good. That's a lot of total value locked. Uh, fees, about 5.4 million in 30 days and annualized about 65 million. And 19.8 developers over the last 30 days as well. And the other thing that's important to look at here is daily active users. 3,460, which is not a hell of a lot. And uh, code commits are down about 36%. Let's switch gears. Let's look at Uniswap metrics. You can see the fully to do market cap is 6.89. Again, Uniswap has more inflation. It's one of the things that dinged it in the compendium score as well. TVL, 4 billion, slightly less than Aave. Uh, fees, 43 million over the last 30 days. Annualized, 524. It's so nearly half a billion dollars in fees. Active developers, 28. Nearly 10 more than Aave. And a couple of other things. Daily active users, 47,000. So that is all pretty stunning. Let's rack them up and find out. Because, uh, you know, you're obviously interested in which one to play. So I did a very, very high level analysis as to 
the type of things I look at. So from this result here, you can see TVL, Ave has more, but everything else, everything else I've marked in green there, Uniswap wins, more fees, more annual fees, uh, more devs, more um, daily active users. And I calculated the fully digital market cap divided by daily active users. And you have nearly $400,000 per daily active user for Aave, which is quite expensive. And you swaps $146,000. But remember, that can be kind of justified when you look at the fees that Uniswap actually charge. And net net here, you can see Aave win one sixth of the metrics and Uniswap win five sixths of the metrics. And despite Aave having a better tokenomic score, this is so important. Uniswap is better value. So I hope that is interesting. Now there's interesting stuff as well to look at when you break down the top DEXs. Not that Aave is a decentralized exchange per se, but I thought this was fascinating from DeFi Llama. And if you look at the top eight exchanges, Uniswap, number one, Uniswap, number five on Arbitrum, Uniswap, number six, V2, and then Uniswap, number eight on Polygon. They basically own the whole space. And I am a Uniswap user, although I tend to do it on Matic because I hate the Ethereum fees. But uh, four out of eight are in, are, are in our Uniswap based protocols, which is huge. Again, the lion's share, the king of the jungle, whatever you want to call it. And there's also interesting things happening. Sorry for being so long winded, but your question uh, triggered a whole lot of thoughts. One, this news just came out. Today, this is A16Z, it's Andreessen Horowitz, the VC firm, Crypto Arm, and uh, they do back layer zero as a bridge. And what's interesting about this is A16Z used all of their 15 million of their uni to vote against the proposal. And that was, the proposal was, uh, I think, for the wormhole bridge to be used for the Uniswap version three deployment. And partners at the firm previously noted intentions to vote for layer zero in the last week's temperature check on which bridge to use for the deployment. And remember, the other big VC firm is Jump Crypto, and they are the ones who run Wormhole. And we discussed Wormhole many times last year. Um, fascinating piece of technology. So we'll see. Now we have VCs involved in the crypto wars trying to push their own layer zero. So it's kind of funny. Be interesting to watch how this goes. But at the end of the day, <laughs> it's going to be very important which layer zero, zero will win. Next in the box um, from Birdzini. In your video about pair trading, you have pairs on one trading view chart like Tesla MicroStrategy or Bitcoin USDT over Tesla. Could you explain how you get these on one chart, please? I would love making my own to increase my bags by trading custom pair charts. So within Patreon this morning, I shared all of my top 60 pairs and what I use and the code for them. You can just dump it straight into TradingView. But how to build them is here as follows. Uh, in TradingView, you just click new chart in the bottom and the button in the top left corner of the screen. In the symbol field, you just start typing like BTC or MSTR or TSLA or EUR for Euro, whatever you want. And you can make pairs on everything. And uh, then once you have that, you just select the first asset from the list. I like Bitstamp for Bitcoin, for example, but it's good to look at other different exchanges too, because rates do vary. And in the compare to field, type in the name, second asset, for example, ETH, and hit select, and then create button to open up the pair. Now, examples of some of what I look at for pairs. Now I'm looking at pairs right now, not only crypto pairs, but crypto equity pairs and also pairs when you divide things divided by money supply, etc. But this is kind of what I look at, I tend to be very focused, but a whole bunch of different symbol types like crypto spreads, stocks, funds, CFDs, and on the side, mostly technology when it comes to stock sectors. Uh, you can see it's 57% tech stocks, but a little bit around consumer durables and finance and retail trade as well. Some of those actually in those categories, like finance and retail trade would be finance would be Square, retail trade would be Amazon, but I, it doesn't consider them like technology per se. And some examples of some pairs, uh, a couple of ones um, looking at, you know, Phantom Bitcoin pair, uh, a lot of Solana Bitcoin pairs, Solana Phantom, Solana Cardano, Tesla, MicroStrategy, Tesla Apple, 
you know, short queues, Shopify, Tesla, etc. I'm watching uh, many, many pairs every single day to try identify when things are completely out of sync to understand when is a good time to swap in. And of course, looking at the underlying symbols as well to understand good times to find bargains. And we'll talk more about bargain finding as well later because there's a question coming up on that now too. So next is from Cornhead. With all the exchange instability lately, what two exchanges are you using or what two exchanges would you recommend using as you get back into a bull market? So this is interesting. I'm not plugging any particular exchange here at all, but I just say openly what I do use, and I use Coinbase One, it's zero trading fees. They still get you on the spreads between assets, but if you time it right, you can find a way to eliminate that. They give you the first 30 days free, and then it's $29.99 a month. But if you're, um, you know, if you're moving a large amount of money, the $30 of fees, etc., doesn't make a big difference in commission. But if you're using small amounts, it can destroy your day. So be careful of that. If you are an active trader, it doesn't take a long time to eat that 30 bucks. Now let's look at decentralized exchanges. And I, you asked for two. I only use one right now. There's nothing else I use. Uh, back in the day, I had different accounts, but now I'm, you know, like with equities, I tried to limit it as we go forward. And I'm hoping for a better exchange than Coinbase one day too. But the DEXs, I do use Uniswap and I use Radium um, most of the time. I also use some other trading platforms too that I'm just testing out to get a feel for how good they are. Now, when you do this, you have to watch for spreads and you have to watch for wrapped products. I always say, get the pure form. But in Uniswap, you'll see here the rate of exchange of how many sol you need for one ETH, 70.44, which is high. But on Radium, you can get wrapped ETH for uh, a lot less. And again, if you look at the spreads, another drill down to the spreads here, you can see on the left is a Uniswap. No, the left is, is, is TradingView actual price. 69.11, that is the number of sol you have per every ETH. And if you swap on uh, radium, for example, it can be 70.44 needed for every ETH. So be careful out there on the spreads because it can cost you quite a substantial amount, like three, four, even 5% of the actual trading amount as well as you go forward. So time it carefully, snipe it carefully. Only use limit orders too. Next question, uh, this is from Danny C. Can you give your opinion on which projected support levels to watch for Tesla in 2023-2024? So this is an interesting one. Like support levels, I'm going to change the question around a little bit. I'm going to show you where I believe my overall support level is for that time frame, barring any nasty black swans or something terrible happening. And also the layer out levels or hedge levels. So this chart here has a lot of stuff packed into it. And let me try and walk you all through what we are showing here. First of all, my MT, which means medium term support level for Tesla, is 226. It's funny, I'm saying 226 when Tesla's trading at 190 right now. And it's out, it's above that level. But if you look at things like the 200 day moving average, where Tesla has come from, over the past couple of years, that 226 is kind of like my, my, my base base level uh, that I expect Tesla to get to before I'd even consider hedging. Now, the other aspect you see here is a couple of things. Um, and that, that 226 is also a floating target, by the way. It depends on actual price action, momentum of the stock, etc. cetera. Uh, in addition, I've got my layers here. I have a new layer out model coming real soon uh, that will be available hopefully within a week or two. We're just doing some final testing. Uh, but this is driven off many factors like your cost basis, your settings, whether you're bullish, bearish, or neutral. Also history, uh, you know, sharp ratio, recency bias, squeeze levels, and so forth. But these layer out levels is are the layers I expect us to have resistance over the next couple of years. So the first layer, and this resistance level could also be a place where you take profit. So for example, for crypto, this would be geared around when to start taking money off the table or when to start hedging, where you could sell you know, 20% at layer one or 35% at layer one and just get out and move to cash. So for Tesla, that would be $328, first layer, 
Second layer, $381. Third layer, 466. Remember, the all-time high for Tesla was about 420. So the 466 is above the all-time high. But remember, it's a very different beast. The fundamentals get stronger every day, despite all the FUD that you read in mainstream media. And uh, just stepping out again, I had a great interview with Farzad uh, two days ago, and we discovered and discussed a million different things. But one of them was how lost... Wall Street analysts are when they look at Tesla. They have no clue what it is. Even the people that I thought were the best in the business still lost and they missed the opportunity to pick it up. And they're still saying, oh, well, you know, margins could fall and there might be no demand. It's like, just wait and see. It's It's been the most sure thing I've ever seen. I'm more sure about Tesla than I am about Bitcoin, believe it or not. But getting back to the la layer three, that's out of the money. Layer four, we might not get to layer four for a couple of years, uh, 552 and layer five, $605. Remember, I'm extremely bullish in Tesla. And uh, this also has uh, on the chart, you'll see a couple of things. You see sell and buy arrows, but also you'll see a little green arrows, darker green arrows, which are the DCAS levels. They are when to buy and how much to buy and when not to buy based on what we call squeeze here. So that's kind of what this chart looks like. Now, when it comes to us getting to these layers, I don't care if it's six months from now or a year and a half from now, but we will be hitting many of these layers. What I do at them depends on where we are and it depends on whether other assets are available to swap into. And remember as well, I, I was, I'm gonna talk more about this in a minute, but I actually swapped Bitcoin into Tesla because I was more bullish on Tesla which caused a lot of groans in the audience. But again, I was out of cash. <laughs> so I had to do something to get more. Anywho, I hope that helps. And uh, you'll be hearing more about the layer out model real soon. So next is from Craig M. Uh, can you do a comparison between the financials of Tesla and Rivian? I read somewhere that Rivians are a lot better than Tesla, but after watching you for months, I couldn't think that's the case. Well, thank you for asking the question. And I'm hoping you guys can all ramp up and do this yourselves to teach you how to fish. It's not hard, just requires some num number crunching. So first of all, let's look at some of the financials across the top. We've got Tesla and we've got Rivian, we've got the price, we've got the market cap, you've got Tesla at 600 billion, uh, Rivian at 17 billion. And people think, oh wow, Rivian's cheap. 17 billion versus 600 is a lot more upside. But no, you've got to dig into the numbers. You look at the earnings per share. Uh, Tesla do basically four bucks. Rivian lose $15 a share. The earnings per share next week, next year, again, estimated five and a half versus minus five and a half. I thought that was a coincidence. Uh, forget the one year target. Look at the forward PE. Again, Rivian is not expected to make profit as long as the eye can see. We'll talk more about that in a minute too. Um, and then you have EBITDA minus seven billion versus plus seven billion for Tesla. Uh, that is kind of stunning. And uh, let's just dig more into this. Let's look at line of sight to any profits. There is none. Even after 2026, this company is still going to be losing money, still going to be burning cash. That's not good. I don't want to share the Tesla numbers because they're too good. Um, let's look at how they are burning Rivian, that is, $8 billion a year, and they only have $13 billion left. That means soon there will only be $5 billion left, which means they'll have less than a year of run rate left before they have to go and get some more investors to pump them up and dilute the stock. Really, really, really bad sign. And let's look at this one as well. This is kind of amazing. And this goes back to what I said before regarding Wall Street analysts and how the predominance of retail investors are in stocks like Tesla. But Wall Street isn't. And But look, retail investors think this is the plague. Retail only own 1.4% of Rivian. They are saying no thanks to Rivian. And nearly Retail investors own nearly 11 times the amount uh, of Tesla versus Rivian. Uh, and again, they are currently unprofitable. They're not forecast to become profitable until beyond 2027, even if they're still around then. They have very volatile share price. Insiders are selling like crazy over the past three to six months. Uh, they've also been heavily diluted in the last year, but basically it's deterred from every single aspect of financials. There's no glowing sign. Uh, but that being said, uh, I have heard people, they love the Rivian pickup truck. They say it's great. 
and it's very sophisticated, but it's also extremely hard to build and extremely costly to build. And that's why they're learning so, losing so much per share. So uh, I hope that helps. Um, but again, there is no alternative to Tesla, as far as I'm concerned, from a data perspective, growth, technology, moats, combination of S-curves, energy business, bots, semis, yada, yada, yada. I could go on and on again. Watch Farzad's video here. Um, next question is from Print Infinity. I like that. I think it means printing money to infinity. Um, with everything pumping after the Fed's 0.25 basis point hike, are you considering layering in more on any of the stocks crypto lately? I bought the absolute bottom of Tesla, Google, Amazon, Microsoft. Great job, by the way. I was contemplating jumping in with more powder now. So uh, let me explain what I did. Um, as you guys know, uh, I've been pretty much fully deployed since November. Meta was a big early trade in November, well discussed here, every single step of the way. Uh, Tesla layering in all the way down. The deeper it went, the harder I went to the point where I had to swap Bitcoin for Tesla because I was so bullish. Uh, Solana was December. Um, not only did I do a quick tax loss sale, but uh, I actually got more as well when it was down at $10 or less. And uh, again, I mentioned I ran out of cash. So I've been pretty much fully deployed and just harvesting. But the interesting thing about the way I'm set up is I have a margin. And because the increase of my equities has gone up, particularly Tesla, my largest position, uh, it's put a lot of margin in my account. And this enables me to go back to doing things like put selling and hedging. And that's what I plan to do. Because right now, after... Uh, stocks have gone up 60 to 100% for many names uh, that you know. The Invi All the stuff we watch here, NVIDIA, Tesla, Meta, all the Oz, <laughs> I've done really well. But this, they, they will be running out of steam or they have run out of steam for now because markets don't go straight up. They shoot up, take a breather, maybe fall back a bit, and then shoot up, take a breather, fall back a bit. So that's kind of what we're. And in terms of watch list, I have my eye on a few names. These are things that I don't hold right now, or I have way too little. Um, but I also have my eye on a few shorts, uh, shorting a couple of things like some ice manufacturers, maybe some banks. Um, but again, I think it's time for a breather. So that's kind of my game plan. And as soon as I buy anything, or contemplate a trade, I will let the community know first as well. And uh, next in the box, uh, this is from Pantry. I keep hearing you talk of your options class. When and where is it going to be held? Well, we had it uh, last week on Patreon. It, there is a full recording of that class. There was a slight bug within Patreon where the notification of the class and the video it was delayed getting to people, so you may have missed it or got stuck in a spam filter or something. But uh, we will be doing a lot more of them. So it is on Patreon, and you can see it there uh, for the investor tier or higher. And I plan on doing a series of these videos for Patreon members and, and breaking down more options trades, looking, taking apart the Black Shoals, helping you use that model that we have as well. Um, doing things like how to use margin, how to configure your brokerage account, how to sell puts, one of my favorite strategies, and a whole bunch more. Because now that we are coming out of the doldrums and Fed pivot is on the horizon, etc., it's, you know, I've been uh, full on risk on anyway, as I have been for a while. But uh, I think it's a much, much safer time to be in the market, despite all the weird macroeconomic data that's out there. And again, as I've been saying, there's so many things that are different this time. We've come from a zero rate environment to a pretty accelerated rate environment in a short period of time, and that's messed up the yield curve. Maybe it doesn't forebode a recession, but I'll be talking about that later this week as well. Next week, I'll do a quick macro one on where we stand. And in helping animals news, thank you as well, everybody out there for your super stickers and contributions and everything else. This week we donated to primarily primates and they help animals. And we have Jack, who's also a team member. So we're trying to find animals with names of our team members as well. Jack is a Hamadryas and olive baboon hybrid. And he was a former pet using the entertainment industry, which is terrible. And uh, But now he has a new sanctuary to hang out and play every day and watch YouTube videos like the rest of us. 
I'm kidding. So that was the KPM for today. Uh, I want to thank you, everybody. I'm going to do some open Q&A right now with you all. And thank as well, everybody in the community. So first uh, question is from one Brightham. Uh, I'm trying to rebuild my portfolio. I'm looking at Bitcoin and Tesla. What percentage would you allocate to each for long-term hold? Well, it depends on how high they run. So me personally, Tesla is my biggest position. Um, and it's even bigger now because I was swapping Bitcoin into my Tesla position. But now it's getting to the level where I wouldn't do that anymore. If anything, if Tesla runs out of steam, I'll swap back into Bitcoin. And that's kind of my plan. But my overall goal, I tried to keep things simple. You know, three large crypto positions, three large equity positions. And the big position in, in those three, thirds in those bags, typically 80%. So imagine I would be 70 to 80% Bitcoin, 70 to 80% Tesla, and then the other 30 or 20% would be allocated to two other big names. And then the odd speculation on the side, like Meta was a speculation, but that grew really big, really fast. Um, but it's hedged. <laughs> but, you know, when you see the options video, you see exactly what happened with that one. Um, but here, um, you know, 50-50, so if you have 100,000, that would equate to, let me get the numbers right, about 4,000 Bitcoin, no, 40,000 in Bitcoin, 40,000 in Tesla, and then your other 20,000 would be allocated to other names. Or words that I'm just running through kind of quick numbers in my head to give you a broad brushstroke. But I believe both will do very well. And the reason I do this as well is if one blows up, imagine Satoshi reappears or something happens to the protocol, uh, and it goes to zero, then you are safe with the other one, or vice versa. And that's why I do that. So I do believe the asymmetric bet equity of our life over the next 10 years is Tesla, and it has been as well for the last four or five years. And I think Bitcoin is also the hardest asset on earth. That's why I allocate. Dog one, thank you for the review of the awesome I resources. Thank you so much. We It was kind of funny doing that video yesterday. We had people in the community for a year and a half who didn't realize all of this stuff was available, like Discourse and Discord and um, all of the other things. So thank you so much. MT, thank you, sir. Happy feet <laughs> up there. Team Canada, I love you guys. Uh, we are coming out of crypto hibernation. Can you do a quick uh, ETH, W, and VVS? Um, that's, is that ETH, W, is that wrapped ETH? Hang on, let me just check. Make sure I get this right. Um, Wisdom tree Ethereum. Uh, I guess ETHW is is an ETF of some sort. Um, I don't. Let me check. Uh, this is not one I am familiar with. Uh, what I can do is well, I will um, check that out later. Um, Oh, ETHW is Ethereum Proof of Work. Okay, now I got it. So that was a piece. I think I remember the merge to Proof of Stake. I said, any uh, forks you get from that initial one, just sell them immediately. And that's what I did. And got rid of them uh, straight away. Uh, but they're, you know, I don't even remember what I was at, but that's where I don't believe the ETH POW has any future. And VVS, let's have a look at what that is. Um, Bear with me one second. Must be a crypto as well. VVS Finance. Again, I've never heard of that. Again, one of the things I try to do is be very focused. VVS Finance. Hmm. Hang on a second. Nope, it's not the season where people are yellowing into stuff that is very obscure. Rank number 234. Never heard of it. I tend to focus on the top 100 cryptos now. It used to be the top 300 back in the day, but uh, that is has extreme inflation, really bad tokenomic score. Uh, I would be very, very careful. Very careful. I would not touch that uh, at all. So sorry about that, Happy Feet. <laughs> Two pieces of bad news. Um, again, th there's, there's really, really good assets out there, everybody. Try not to dabble in risky stuff. Uh, Web3Me, should I leverage trade, range trade pairs? 
can, we are working on another roadmap model that looks at uh, leveraging co-integrated pairs that both go long and short using options. And that's going to be like an advanced tool. Um, I call it uh, pair trading on steroids, like DCA on steroids. It's going to be pair trading on steroids. So that's coming th too. But be very, very careful. Um, crypto is very unpredictable. It doesn't quite yet run off fundamentals. You see stupid stuff happening all the time in crypto. You've got meme coins having bigger market caps than other things. You've got scam coins having bigger market caps than uh, things that actually have real value. Um, just, just like I showed with the example of Aave versus Uniswap. So be very, very, very careful uh, right there with leverage. Uh, if you if things if things are really beat down, like if heaven forbid we see Ethereum down at nine hundred bucks, then go three for one leverage, no problem on that. But be very very careful. Uh, range trade pairs. I haven't looked at leveraging crypto pairs, but pair trading is where it's at, and that's where you can really amplify your bags, everybody. That's why we spend so much time focusing on that too. Next uh, question is Berkeley. Berkeley, Berkeley. Uh, thoughts on Bitcoin ordinals. Wow, I don't even know what a Bitcoin ordinal is. And I promised myself, just so everybody wants, should know, extreme focus. So even, even though I really look mainly on a, a very, very small number of equities and a very small number of cryptos, I can still miss things. So um, these are the NFT Bitcoin things, I think. Again, <laughs> I don't invest in NFTs. Um, things that can be infinitely printed, uh, I don't know. So I, uh, I can't recommend that again, a lot of people, well, very few people can play successfully with NFTs, but 98% probably lose on them. So just again, the challenge, but number one, preserve capital. Number two, get return on that capital. Um, Alper Sare Kasap. Is Tesla planning to use Bitcoin or any coin? Uh, I don't know. I think they may turn on accepting Bitcoin once we get above $30,000 again. Uh, but I don't know what the plans are. They are still holding. They sold 90%. They're still holding 10%, which is quite a big bag. Uh, Akash, what crypto you see winning in liquid staking derivative and AI? Oh, well, AI, it's hard to say, but maybe fetch but again the tokenomics are really bad and uh, liquid staking looks like frax is doing very well um so maybe the two are looking but again i don't i don't i don't trade in them because to get past what i would buy it has to pass a certain hurdle of quality and tokenomics compendium scores and again uh, as I've been saying since I've been doing this for two years, 90, I used to say 95% is garbage. Now it's 98%. So there's very, very, very good, very few good quality names out there. So be careful, everybody. And I did look into the AI names, but they've all run too far, too fast, and they all have bad tokenomics. So wouldn't touch them. Now, the one that is a kind of a quasi play is the graph, uh, but that's not really a true AI play. Sometimes people just jump on the AI messaging bandwagon to get traction. And a big thank you as well for your super stickers. Kiwi Robin, Bottle Red, GT350, AC1, Marina, how are you? And KN, appreciate you all. I've got to change a door today. I've got to fix a door because it's broken. So um, I had to go a little bit earlier today. I want to thank you all for being here. And let me know if you like the earlier time too on a Sunday. I know for our friends in Europe, uh, do like it as well. So thank you all. And it looks like I am still being completely shadow blocked. I used to always get like 4,000 concurrent users. Viewers now only have 1,249 likes. So hit the like, I appreciate it. So people can see this video. Otherwise, if nobody's watching it, there's no point in me doing it. So thank you all for being here. Bye.